this, its beautiful curves, as you can see before me, Hello, Chris at ePianos here. Again, another video from the shed for you, this time with the glorious looking Korg SV2 keyboard. Um, five things I like about this keyboard, five things I don't like about this keyboard. Um, there are loads of demonstration videos out there. Uh, there's the brochures, you can read things like that, but this is just my own view about this piano. And let's start with the things I do like. Uh, the first and most obvious thing is just look at this beauty. Uh, it really is uh, a special bit of kit. Uh, it's the kind of thing you want to have on stage. It just looks fantastic with this beautiful vintage uh, curved back uh, with the speaker outlets for the one that has speakers built in. There is one that doesn't have speakers built in as well. Uh, it, and the aviation style knobs here um, with notches in them and the buttons, everything's very tactile and of course the valve here on the left. The thing is, in my view, the best looking stage piano on the market at the minute. It's just a beauty. In fact, if I had to choose uh, a shell, a chassis, a cabinet for a stage piano from any of them out there at the minute, it would just be this one because, my God, it looks beautiful. Now, before we get going, I just need to ask you at home a question because um, you might have seen my other videos here in the shed and I'm playing around with different types of format. And I need you to answer me what setup on the screen you like. As you can see, I've got a split screen, I've got the piano here and I've got an overhead shot from up here. Hello. And at the minute it's on the side of the screen, but where do you want it? Would you prefer to have it here? Would you prefer to have it like this? Or would you prefer to have it like this? Or we could even try this one. So please do me a favor and leave a comment below and tell me which setup you prefer like that because I know it's difficult. Uh, some of you want to see what my hands are doing, some of you aren't that bothered, some of you don't want to see my face at all. You just want to see what the piano is doing and we, I can focus on that. But just let me know in the comments please. I'm trying to make these videos uh, better for you people viewing at home. So the second thing I really like about this piano is something that caught me by surprise, but it's something that I always look for in a piano, and that's if you can lay your hands on the keys and the piano can just make your heart race a little bit faster. And there was a particular piano sample that I found in here that really did that. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, a pianist who plays with a real verve in her playing called Jacqueline Swab and you you've probably heard her playing without realizing it um, if if you've ever seen or watched a clip of uh, Ken Burns documentaries um, like the Civil War or baseball or the Congress there's loads of them on YouTube and in the background plays this sentimental piano all the way through and this lady plays this piano with such emotion and such feeling she rings it like a bell, and you can only do that with certain piano samples. That's what I found on this one, using um, piano sample uh, number one, and it's the variation of number five, which I think is called Japanese upright piano. So it might, um, well, it's probably a Yamaha one that they're uh, simulating, but I'm gonna give you an example of it. Have a listen, it's gorgeous.
Now point number three is to do with the strings on here and boy this is so welcome and well done everybody at Korg for doing this but the default strings on here have a perfect balance for playing them on their own. There is there's something in there that allows you to play with attack or it allows you to play um, very gently and have a delayed uh, action all at once. It's so very well balanced that it's a total joy to play. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean and I'll vary it from playing down on the bass register up to the treble, hard, soft, bit in between. <laughs> They've just done a fab job with it and uh, it's something that jumped out of me. So here we go. Now point number four really cuts to the core of what this keyboard is all about um, it, and the thing that it really offers that uh, other stage pianos don't and that is it excels at electric pianos, things uh, particularly um, driven through amplifiers and it has a real valve uh, in here as well. Um, the reason this really really benefits when you're playing on stage is like, rather like the guitarist, if you want to have that extra trebly bite to cut through the band mix, you can do it, um, as well as giving you a genuinely authentic uh, valve sound that you can use in the studio as well. But this is one particular sound that jumped out of me, and it's using the uh, electric piano going through an old uh, Vox AC30 amp with a bit of extra drive in there too, um, and when you play a bit harder it just bites back at you and growls and snarls and I'll shut up and start playing, shall I?
number five is how well the effects processing works on this and how you can um, really get a great unique sound to put in your live mix or the thing that really got me excited is into your studio mix. Um, I'm going to give an example of another electric piano and first of all I'm going to play it without any of the ambient uh, processing effects on it at all and it's very dry. Listen to this. Okay, so it's nice, but I'm adding a bit of the room reverb on here and listen to how this gives it a lovely set back um, vintage tone that really has just got me excited about doing a recording with this because it's going to give it such a, a gorgeous effect within the mix of other instruments. So on to some of the things I, I don't like about it, and there aren't many of them, and none of them are deal breakers, but getting the piano here, uh, back here to the shed, it is rather awkward to move, and having moved in a Yamaha DGX660, a P515, um, a CP88, and other types of stage pianos, they all are rather boxy in the designs, which means you can get a good handhold on them. But this, its beautiful curves, as you can see before me, uh, is rather hard to grapple. And what I was finding is it's slipping out of my hands somewhat, and it's, it's heavy, but then it's not that much heavier than those other models that I just mentioned. Um, but it's difficult to carry. So you can, as you can tell, it's not a deal breaker, but just beware, it is quite tricky to carry. It might have been quite nice if there were some handholds built into it somewhere that probably wouldn't have taken away from the uh, aesthetics of it slightly, but for, um, for gigging musicians it would have been quite nice to be able to just grab the thing somewhere and walk it up the road to get it into the venue. Now the second thing that um, uh, disappointed me somewhat is there's no way to do the simple task of layering voices on top of each other on the piano itself. Now this is by design, it's worth knowing, because of course Korg wanted to keep this vintage look and to keep it very functional and very focused on playing live. But if you like to experiment with your sounds and be able to layer them at the touch of a button, that's something you can't do on here. There are preset layer sounds and indeed there's a great bit of software that you can use for um, Mac and PC. Uh, there's a free Korg editor where you can mix your own sounds and save them straight onto the keyboard as a preset. And I've got some of those that I'll play, but without using a computer, there's no way to do that using a combination of buttons on the keyboard itself. And that, I, again, it's not a deal breaker and I can understand why, but beware that you're not going to be able to mix your sounds just as a standalone keyboard. And incidentally, that um, bit of software, the Korg uh, editor, uh, good as it is, it's only available on Mac and PC. It's a shame it's not available on iOS or Android because it would have been kind of nice to be able to have 
a, uh, an iPad or an iPhone very handy to be and mix your sounds and go out and play live instead of having to take your laptop with you everywhere. Third thing um, I've got against the keyboard and uh, it feels hard to say anything like that when I'm looking at such beautiful curves uh, before me in this piano is the keys are plastic and not wooden. The keys are weighted, they do feel like a piano to play, but on similarly priced instruments like the uh, CP88 and the Yamaha P515, um, we do get wooden keyboards. And if you're a purist when it comes to playing piano, then those might be the instruments for you because they give you the most authentic feel. Uh, as I mentioned before, the SV2 is focused in its design to try and offer you this fantastic stage instrument with vintage vibes, focusing on electric pianos, etc. etc. Um, but it compromises by having plastic keys. Again, it's not a deal breaker, but beware if you're looking for something that's going to be piano and you're focused on piano and piano is your main love, then that might be a bit of a letdown with this piano. So, in summary, it's the best looking stage piano on the market, in my opinion. There's nothing that quite looks as gorgeous as this. It focuses on a particular area that none of the other stage pianos do. It's got its own built-in uh, valve here to give you that vintage valve amp sound with your electric pianos, and indeed you can experiment with different types of pianos through the valve as well if you want to, and make your own unique sounds. So it's obviously not trying to compete directly with the models that I, with the other stage pianos out there, it's doing its own thing. And that's what Korg do. They do their own thing and I love that. I used to own the predecessor to this, the SV1, and I used to I used to love it. I used to take it around and treat it like it was my baby and I'd put it on stage and I'd go and have a look at it um, while I was sitting in the audience before we played and I'd just look at that piano and think, that's mine, that's mine, and that's gorgeous. So it does its own thing, that's, that is what uh, they do. Credit to them, there's nothing that's gonna be as eye-catching as this puppy on stage. So personally, from a piano playing background, um, if I just want something that's piano, there probably are better ones out there for me, but the question is, did this make my heart skip a little bit faster? The answer is yes, but it's not for piano-y reasons. It's because I look at the thing and I love it. And it is also that when I think about the fun you could have on this piano, in the applications for it, for playing live, and also for recording in the studio with the um, particular sounds this can offer you that none of those other stage pianos can, yeah, this is great. It fills that hole in the market. If you want something different that's gonna give you something nothing else can, the Korg SV2 is for you. It's a great piano. It might just be that thing you've been looking for that's a bit different, but is still awesome in its own way. Now, before I go, I'm just going to play with a couple of the presets that I've made via the um, Korg editor uh, on my laptop, um, just to give you some variation about the other types of sounds you can do here. So thanks for now. Do me a favor and leave a thumbs up for this video below and leave a comment or ask a question for that matter. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.